Hi everybody, it's uh, December 11, 2019. Uh, so for the past few months I've been hearing a lot in uh, the news, blogs, um, just articles about uh, repo agreements. Um, and I want to dig a little deeper and just kind of share with you uh, some findings I, I have found that might be useful to um, individual investors and investors like yourself. So a little quick history, uh, repo agreement is a, uh, a very short duration um, alone between banks. They basically lend each other money back by treasuries. Back in September, the rates spiked up to about 9%, and the Fed had to step in uh, to, um, to create you know, stability in the, in, the, in, the rate, in, the, in the rate and lower it down. Um, it worked. Uh, however, from what I'm reading is that the story maybe isn't over yet. There is a lot of different factors uh, you know, rolling into um, at the end of 2019 that might just click. If they click, you might see things such as the banks trying to get away from repos because they want to lower their ratios um, for their stress testing. Uh, the reason for that is because the market capitalization, their stocks have gone up so high because the market's done so well, and it would benefit them to reduce their exposure to repos. Another factor is that the Fed has been reducing um, its, its book uh, of treasuries, and that has uh, decreased the liquidity in the market. So you have a, a few different things coming into play here that can just potentially click and um, create a situation where the Fed has to step in and do QE4 or do a um, open market operation they don't necessarily want to do. So if they paint themselves in the corner and they could they could certainly win the war of liquidity, they could certainly win the war of um, buying or selling treasuries, but the but the, the they win the battle rather. But the war is. Can they maintain the inflation where they want it to be? And is the stock market going to chug along the way it has been in the last 10 years? So a few things. One, uh, corporates, um, corporate bond issuance has been a main driver uh, of the stock market growth the last couple of years. The reason for that is because companies have been borrowing at very low rates and in turn uh, retiring stock by repurchasing, repurchasing their shares. <clears throat> Secondly, if you have a financial plan and you have your, um, your spending the next couple of years mapped out, uh, you might see yourself having, um, you know, sort of some some spending coming up. It might not be a bad time to, um, you know, pre pre spend. Uh, and the reason for that is because of inflation. You know, jumps inflation again can go from zero to its peak in usually less than two years. So say like two three percent to like eighteen percent. That's how long it typically takes for inflation to spike. So if you don't want inflation to become an issue, spending now is better. Um, from an allocation, from your asset allocation, we don't recommend trying to time the market, trying to say the market's going to blow up. But I would say is if you see some gains and you don't necessarily mind paying a little bit of taxes towards the end of this year, might not be a bad time to take some of the tile off the table and go towards the lower bandwidths that you want to maintain inside of your uh, inside of your asset allocation. We have no confidence or clarity or information that leads us to believe that we can time it, but it doesn't it, it doesn't hurt to you know just make some some good steps. In case something becomes an issue, um, and again, I, I've heard both sides of the story that the, the the Fed has this well under control, but I also heard that they don't really understand the whole thing. And I think from a uh, from an investor, individual investor standpoint, it's important just to just to take it all with a grain of salt and you know and uh, do the steps you can do to make it as less of an impact as possible. So until next time, have a good day. Bye bye.